on Facebook and get that all going. But uh, how I, I can't wait to hear about what's going on because um, with you in terms of early birdies and stuff, it's going to be amazing uh, because you've had to shift and I want to hear how you've shifted because it's, it's everybody's yeah. have to shift. Right. And, and you, sure. you know, it, I mean, I really, this is going to be really cool. So, you know, it's not an old time. Come on, work with me here. Yeah, there we go. Sometimes the, this, uh, this doesn't quite work. Uh, anyways, uh, Kate, Kate. The guy I had on last week was, uh, last week was for my high school. That was the drummer. He was awesome. Oh my gosh. I didn't see it, but I saw your ad. Was it, is he a golf pro? No, he's not. No, he's he, a okay. professional drummer. And um, he went across the world and he's uh, now building his own fortune in, in um, believe it or not, in hot sauce, which is kind of wild. Awesome. Yeah, it's really neat. All right, that's percolating away there. It's just setting my meeting. It's got. It's obviously going to make me go live. Come here, George. Say hi to Kate. Oh. Yeah, Georgie. All right, here we go. All right, gallery review. There we go. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Can't wait to have this awesome conversation with one of my very dearest friends and Mama Birdie of amazing excellence with children, Kate Tempesta of Kane Tempesta Urban Golf Academy, uh, Birdie Basics, if you follow it on Instagram. Um, probably the absolute best early childhood education junior golf program on the face of the planet. Uh, I really can't tell you enough how much this woman has changed my life in terms of making me a better coach, making me a better person, and also bringing me into the birdie realm of understanding how to roll out golf to kids age three to five. So my darling, thank you so very much for joining us and uh, taking some time out of your day. I know you've been always busy with that wonderful 11 month old young man that is hanging all over you guys. And you and Heidi have been super, super occupied with the Chuck. He's just, I mean, every time you put something up on social media, it's like, how can you not smile? The kid's just like an instant poster for like smile. Yeah. Wow. How are you doing? Mission accomplished. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Um, no complaints. I'm fully enjoying being a mom and embracing the changes. They're tough. And yeah. there are times when, you know, I want to bury my head in the sand. And, but all in all, we're healthy. We're happy. We're learning how to pivot. And I get to wake up every morning with absolute joy and uh, watch this little man develop, which is incredible. You know, it's funny. Eh? I, I, I said this to my friend the other day who's, she was, she posted a video of her and her son and uh, she was putting her face on his tummy and he was laughing his heart out and it was so great. Right. He's like, he's like six months old, but similar to you and Charlie and Heidi. And so you guys, I mean, he's always so smiley and so laughy and he's, 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 you know, the king of great facial expressions, but it made me think about my little quote that I said, a child's laughter is nature's Red Bull because it really does give you energy. It really pumps you up and it really helps you get through your day, right? It's just such an amazing feeling, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely right. You nailed it for sure. It's, you know, you know, parenthood, I think, set me up to become a better junior coach um, because having to understand kids and having your own has mm -hmm. you know definitely a changed your perspective on how you see children and and you being such a rock star prime to having charlie how, how has it changed your perspective well that's a great question i mean ask me in another year but i mean I, I i didn't know this age i mean i could count on one hand how many times i've been around an infant um and so this was a really big challenge for me and I'm happy to say that as I look back and in hindsight, I followed my gut, I trusted my intuition and the things that infants need 
are very much the same thing that a three, a four, a five, which I would consider to be in my wheelhouse, right? They need love, they need connection, they need mm -hmm. a sense of belonging, they need consistency, they need routine, they need play. Um, and so, I mean, it was so hard, I'm not gonna lie. If, let's all remember when, when we were, you know, going through months one and two and three and four, but at some point, I think I, was able to really lean in and say, you know, I got this, I got this. This so okay. So I've had a handful of times I've been around an infant, but um, at the end of the day, they what they need is the same thing that that a three, four, five year old needs. Well, it, I mean, that's really an interesting point that you bring that up because they've often said, and I mean, you uh, who have studied a lot of early childhood education, I mean, you know, the the formative full, you know, first years of the child's life is so important to get them to be engaged and personable and, and, and feelings and, 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 you know, the studies they've done in child development that way, it just flows right into what you do with early birdies. And I mean, you know, 10 years ago, you know, I don't know if you could even have said that, you know, you would have early birdie classes across the globe and you would have people doing it in all different kinds of, of, of countries. Uh, I think it was kind of a, a, what is not a pipe dream, but it was something you wanted. But now you can actually say in 10 years, you are global girl. And how does that feel, even though we've kind of gone through a really crazy time now, but how does that feel being able to go and say, my, my programs work it, no matter what the language is? Yeah, well, we know this. We know the saying that we've coined, right? Play is mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> um, I, I mean, it's incredible. It's incredible. Um, you know, Heidi shared with me a great artist that she loves, and unfortunately passed away a couple of years ago. Uh, Sharon Jones, and her her big quote was, "What comes from the heart goes to the heart." And I think you know, as I go back to my roots of teaching early childhood and being in the classroom with children and seeing the power of movement and how I brought movement or their curriculum to life through movement and through play. Um, and then how I segue into the golf world and decided that I wanted to very much create that same environment. Um, it was coming from the heart. And so as I think back, there wasn't, you know, I knew that I could leap and then that was going to appear. Um, I mean, I was fortunate enough to have some people that helped me along the way financially and operationally, but, um, I knew what I had was special. I felt like it was special. Um, and I also felt like it would be welcome in other global markets, you know, Italy. I mean, if I look at the roots of early childhood, it's Montessori, it's Reggio Emilia. I mean, it's mm -hmm. right in my wheelhouse, right? So the Canadians, the Australians, I mean, looking at the whole person and the approach that they took in sports medicine, which is what I studied and how I worked with physical therapists that were from Canada and Australia and saw how they worked with people. So when I became an early childhood educator and very quickly, you know, learned how to embrace and develop the whole child. Um, I, I, if you asked me 13 years ago, I would have said my program is going to work better in Italy, in Canada, in Australia. And guess what? <laughs> guess where it is? There it is. Canada, and, and Canada first. Canada, Canada first. first. Yes. Thank you very much. Yes, exactly. Uh, you know, it's really funny. Not my Americans, but no. you know, there's a, there's definitely, you know, you, you, you were a little ahead well, of the curve there. Here's like, a little really interesting story there, right? You know, like having been the, you know, the complete devoted team member, you know, to early birdies, you know, from, you know, 2012. I mean, you know, I truly believe that this changed me as a coach, not, not, and also as a, as a person, because it helped me, like, I still remember the day coming down and shadowing you for that day and, and just being in awe of how you got these kids in all these different urban environments, you know, from a, you know, East Greenwich community school, you know, we're not, then we're in a park, you know, we're in a, in a, on a blacktop beside a park in NYU. And it's just, you know, these kids weren't, underprivileged kids either and and they came and they played and they enjoyed and they had a blast and it was like oh my gosh you're creating all this amazing play right in front of everybody and it's like it didn't matter you didn't need you know you didn't matter that you didn't have a gym it didn't matter you built it on a blacktop and that was i think the hook for me and i was just sitting there thinking you know it's it's the training of really breezing you've done it with me th three times now 
and it's been amazing that way, right? And the really cool part about it was, is every time I did it, I learned more about me as a coach. And I really think this is one of the things that I think that I really hooked on to early. And I'm so glad I did because to watch it grow and then also be able to give feedback and all that stuff with you guys has been just great. What has been, what do you think? Like, don't you agree that I think every professional who teaches junior golf should take early birdie training because it will make them a well-rounded coach? Well, yes. I mean, selfishly, I do think that. Um, uh, I think it, I, absolutely. I mean, it helps you in so many different ways and how you scale back information, how you, I mean, you, you have to so get on the level of the child and I say this all the time, whether they're four or 40 or 400, you have to get on the level of your student and it's do or die with these younger ages. You, you, you get them, you have to engage them or they're peace out. Right. So you're very quick to, to uh, either. Um, I lost my train of thought, but absolutely. I mean, you, well, it's interesting because I really think that, you know, the, the, the thing that people don't really realize, they go, yeah, well, why do I need to learn how to teach three to five year olds? It is absolutely unbelievable to watch you do your thing. I, watching you when we went to the school and watching you take 35 kids and get them in a circle inside 30 seconds yeah. is brilliant. And, and, and what people don't realize is we did that training. And then the very first night we had our, 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 our night, I actually went and took care of the older kids because I left it to the kid, to the assistants that did the training with you and me. Mm -hmm. I look over five minutes in and it's bedlam. Nothing that they learned, nothing that they did. <laughs> the kids are running it. There's parents chipping in the stations. Like I'm like, right. what is going on? Yeah. And yeah. it was because they didn't trust that if they did it the way they, that we showed them and how it was explained to them that it works. And this is the one interesting thing because it's the law of buy-in. Okay. How do you find it in terms of when you're with a group, the ones that you know, buy-in are really, I mean, you don't have to worry about those ones. What do you find is the tipping point for some who may be on the fence? What is it that when you kind of say to them, or you get them to understand one specific thing about early birdies that you kind of go, Oh man, that's it. I'm totally in. Is there one thing or is there a multitude? Are you talking about a buy-in from the parents or a buy-in? No, no, buy-ins from pros, yeah. pros and stuff who kind of sit oh. there and may not know how to do it. And then all of a sudden you're like, they're like, oh man, that's so simple. That's a good question. I don't know. I'd have to reflect on that a little bit. Um, I mean, I, you know, I, fortunately the pros that buy in already have that you know, they already have that gene that they, mm -hmm. they know there's more, they know there's a different way. They know they can start earlier. Um, you know, I just want to touch on something that you were talking about earlier and it brings me back to what I was just talking about with, you know, getting to know Charlie and getting to know myself as a mother of an infant mm -hmm. versus, you know, what I've known for the past 20 years of three to six year olds. It's, it's creating the sense of belonging. And I think like if, if I can give every single junior golf coach out there or any single coach out there, right. The philosophy and in part of the philosophy of I'm going to create a sense of belonging for my students. If you're 40, if you're four or if you're 400, I'm going to create a sense of trust. I'm going to create rapport. I'm going to get on their level. That's what I think every golf coach needs to know. They need to take their golf pro hat off and understand all the softer skills. And how do you connect to your audience? How do you get on their level? Uh, because it's not, you know, Wayne Yamaguchi, or he was the one that said it, like he learned how to take my golf pro hat off, right? And put on the, the human relations hat. That's really it. what it is. Absolutely. The and, gooch. Absolutely. So, yeah, uh, you know what? It is such relationships, right? We're in the relationship business. And it's, 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 I had some gentlemen, I said that uh, last week, actually, and somebody said, well, when they pay, when you, when someone pays you for a, a lesson, but now it's a business transaction, how is it relationship? I said, 
Are you kidding? Oh me? yeah, I saw that thread. I saw right? that. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I was like, I was like, hold on, whoa, wait on a second, brother, because like, I mean, James Jordan and I get all over him, right? I mean, JJ and I, yeah, I, mean, yeah. I mean, right? I mean, there's a guy who gives away so much and like, and, and totally. so inspiring, right? I mean, the guy's amazing, and like, guy. people don't get it, you know? They think it's not just a straight business transaction, right? But no, there's the the relationship you build with your clients, and that's why you and I at building relationships with juniors is so super important, right? I mean, yeah. one of my wonderful stories about about the effect of early birdies, okay? So I have this young woman, her name is Regan. She's 10. She now wants to play in golf tournaments. She started with me when she was two and a half, doing early birdies. Her mom sent me a video of her in pink Uggs, a pink skirt and a pink shirt and pink heart sunglasses, doing early birdies, waving the, waving the, the golf clubs around and dancing. And now she's like, cannot wait to go play golf. And it's because she got introduced to it in such a wonderful way that she's grown a love and appreciation for it. But the relationship I have with her is just amazing, right? And her parents, and, and that, sure, her parents have paid me for lessons, but the relationship she has with Coach Doug goes way deeper than the financial, totally. right? And you and I both know that, totally. right? Totally. So, yep. so how's Mama Birdie been staying connected to her coaches, your coaches that you have in your team. Um, how are you staying yeah. connected with them and keeping them motivated? Cause you know, you guys get on lockdown and you kind of got to say, Oh guys, listen, sorry, but you know, what's been going, you know, what's it been doing? Well, the urban golf Academy is definitely on pause. I mean, we're in New York city as you know. And so uh, it's, it's, it's not looking too good for the foreseeable future. So we've had to pivot a little bit. Um, as far as helping out our Birdie Basics members and the coaches that continue to run programs throughout the country and, and globally, um, we've been working on an online Birdie Basics at home, which is something that we've always toyed around with and had, you know, in our in our mindset, like what we were going to work on next. And certainly the shutdown has helped us accelerate and pivot a little bit faster. So we've, um, we've, made some of our game boards game pieces downloadable we've made some of our proprietary uh, props like the magic shoes magic tracks we've made them into downloadable coloring sheets so that uh, we can get to the end user and that we can help doug with little charlie at home go ahead and create the same kind of learning environment um we've we've designed the birdie summer playbook um to give each student their own little book and of course it's it's relevant now because it's a low touch point like every single mm -hmm. child gets their own book that nobody else has to touch mm -hmm. and in it is birdie's summer themed game game board so birdie has a barbecue she goes to a pool party she's got an ice cream truck she builds a lemonade stand and it's a sticker sheet where the child makes the putt and then they get to put the sticker on the game board there's the birdieisms um we're gonna have stickers that the, the coach can give to the child to put inside the sticker book to learn the different tactical and tactical components of golf um so we've come up with a couple of new fun tools but mostly we're we're pivoting and moving towards the online model which again we've always thought about but now is definitely the time to not only uh help improve our coaches and the network but also get to the end user so parents that have always been curious about getting their young child involved in golf but maybe their local golf course doesn't start until age seven well here's a really fun subscription model that you can download at your own home and watch videos of mama birdie and showing them how to create the same playful fun learning and effective learning environment i've got uh i know that that is an amazing i already have three families i'm thinking about in my head that would jump at the chance to do that because uh yeah. my, my my one set of parents they have um two young girls uh i mean their one daughter she participated in my early birdies class last year and i mean i know to have something online that the parents can interact with and do that yeah. with, and she's familiar with her birdie yeah. would be, is, is gold. So I'm actually going to, you know what, um, after this, we'll, I want more details because I want to send that out to all the parents from those programs last year, because I know that they would want to try and do something like that. And that could be a really cool aspect. What an yeah. amazing pivot. You know, and, and also, I mean, I hear from a lot of people that would love to do it. I mean, when I was at the PGA show and I had the booth, you know, people came by and said, this is a great idea. I love it, but I just don't have time to run this age group. Right. So, I mean, two points to that, you find somebody to run it, right. You hire somebody because this is such a, a 
I mean, this age and the on-ramp and the ability to, to be a funnel into your other programs, like how could you even pass it up? And you don't need to be a golf professional to mm -hmm. teach. You need to go through the Birdie Basics program. You need to understand our philosophy and, and, and go through the training. Um, but so this is a great way to help it's out amazing. family and help it's out. It's really facilities. amazing. You know what might be really interesting about this is that any parent that wants to take a hold of this stuff, I mean, there's, there's a, a potential, right? Does this parent want to do online birdie basics training? And, you know, maybe they want to become a coach down the road when things come out of this, right? And they want to do, exactly. hey, I'm going to start this up. Or, you know, there's different ways that you can look at it. And I think that's just an amazing offer and a great pivot. Like, I mean, like taking pivot and pivoting the, the best I've ever heard so far, like over this whole entire time. I mean, I don't expect anything, you know, anything less from you. But I mean, it's just an amazing way, right? to go yeah. and think, oh my gosh, like Birdie Base is coming to you, right? And you know what, you can now get it right in the right in your own home. And yeah. I mean, that's that without, you know, that just goes without saying. So yeah. one of my absolute favorite people in your life, okay, is Mari, okay? Yeah. We all need a Mari in, in our lives, okay? Everybody. Everybody needs a Mari in our lives. I mean, I mean, Mari's your business partner. You know, she's that compass that helps us and she steers us our ship, right? And, you know, what has been the benefit for you of having such a super, super awesome business partner um, to help this? Because, uh, hey, look, good and bad, there, there's times when you guys can like, you know, uh, you know be, be going back and forth. But in the end, you both need each other. And the really cool part is it's a success because of each other. So how have you found that balance beneficial for you? No, oh, I, I mean, it allows me to do my thing. It allows me to stay in my lane and do what I'm good at and not have to, you know, figure out how to do all of the stuff that's really, really important on the back end that gives me the platform to do my thing, right? Um, it doesn't bog me down with minutia that I would be, I'm not, it's, Minutia, that's not my that's not what I meant to say. It's like it doesn't bog me down with things that I'd be horrible at, but that are absolutely so critical. I mean, I wouldn't we never get paid, we never have any registrations of kids, we never have insurance if somebody got hurt, we'd never, you know, have coaches schedules and have HR concerns met. And I mean, there's a gajillion things that she's done and does. And um, right, I, and can, I mean, she can take my crazy idea and then execute it. Right. And I kill her every day. I mean, she, we were talking the other day, uh, there was a funny thread on Facebook between one of my parents about doing rock, rock band birdie and what would be the six characters. And I was like, share birdie, you know, uh, kiss birdie, Dolly Parton birdie. And she, she chimed in. She's like, you're killing me <laughs> because she knows my next question is, can we get rock band birdie designed? And can we get Dolly Parton birdie? Of course. Right. <laughs> and I'm sure, did you throw in a, like a Bruce Springsteen birdie or a Bon Jovi birdie, Van Halen? So, so, right. Yeah. You know, it's like, uh, but then you'd have to come back with some like hip hop birdie, right? Like birdie, you know, hip. Oh, Bruno Mars. There you we go, have, uh, right? Yeah, Lizzo exactly. Birdie, you know. <laughs> Lizzo Birdie, that would be fantastic, eh? Oh totally. my gosh, that's, you know what, that's, this is the thing, is the cool thing is, is to have somebody like that, and, and I mean, one of the really great things about her is that, you know what, it, it, she's, you know, having somebody like that in your life, it's not easy to give up control, okay? And, and to be able to give up that control, it takes a lot to know that about yourself. So, I mean, you made a really great point. You and I are very similar in that way. We are the big idea machines. We, you know, we, we come up with ideas. We see what it is and, you know, give it to Mari. She takes it in. She looks at it from the business sense and, and the business side and says, yes, no, maybe eh, forget it. Right. And it takes a lot of, to have that person that you trust. And that can come back and you know that it's all for the right reason. Yeah. I really think that at times that people hold it too tight and they try to do everything. And it's kind of like golf nowadays, right? It used to be that the pro was a jack of all trades. Now you see the director of golf, he may good at, be good at business, but man, he's got a merchandising manager. He's got a club fitter. He's got a director of instruction, junior golf instructor, right? And it's right. really interesting that everything is starting to become a lot more diversified, right? Mm -hmm. So how do we, how do we take Birdie now and pivot 
so that we can still get birdie out to kids and pros in this time. So we'll definitely birdie at home, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I think it's a few things. I think it's definitely birdie at home. It's, it's reaching all of the directors and structure, whoever the decision makers are about what programming goes on at the course and getting them to embrace the idea that early junior golf is really important. Um, and looking at it for what it is in all of its seriousness. And then it's not just cute, it's not babysitting. It's if you do it right, you do it well, and you do it with a lot of intention and well thought out programming, it, there's a huge benefit. Um, and I think the other thing is obviously being mindful of all the regulations that are gonna be put on so many of us as far as social distancing. So, you know, how do you social distance a four to six year old, a three to five year old? Uh, that's a tough question. But, but I've got it. I, what? Well, Mari had an idea today, which I, I, I listen, you know what the kids are good. The kids are unfortunately going to be living in space, but you put them all in hula hoops and they drive that hula hoop the whole time. They have to stay in the hula hoop the whole time. Right. And the hula hoop is their, is their spaceship, their car, their truck, whatever it is they're doing. And they have to pilot it by themselves and it keeps them away from everybody. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in theory, right? it's great. In theory, it's amazing. In and theory. as a creative movement teacher of many years, spatial awareness with young children is first and foremost, and a very difficult concept that gets overseen by a golf pro. But children are very, very coachable. And the totally. very first thing, the very first thing I do as an early childhood teacher years ago, when I had my first twos class and threes class, the first 10 weeks is all spatial awareness. It's my bubble, your bubble, let's mm -hmm. everybody inside, you know, outside of our bubble. Um, it's playing every game, every which way that has to do with spatial awareness. And it's things like that that get overseen by the average golf pro, the mm -hmm. traditional golf pro. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, there are definitely fun ways about it. I mean, definitely gonna have to limit class size. You definitely right. wanna have to give each, that's why we created the summer playbook so that every single student has their own materials. Our, our program is so heavily driven on props mm. and children getting their hands on the props, right? True. Children are meant to go into a room and they see all these things and they wanna get their hands on it. And it's far better to create an environment where we allow them to do that with intention than to say, no, don't do this, don't touch that, don't do this, right? So it's a really, um, it's a really special delivery of that concept, like to give the oh. children what they need and yeah. maintain some routine and boundaries and which I forgot to add into the uh, the piece about, you know, what Charlie needs right now, a routine and structure. He needs routines. And so totally. do three, four or five year olds. Um, right. They do 100%. Uh, I mean, heck this 52 year old needs structure for crying. Totally. Oh my, oh my God. gosh. Like don't 100%. 100%. If I don't have structure, Sue, like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no one yeah, can be started. So all right, here's my favorite part of my chats, my fast five. All right, I got five questions for you. Don't know what's coming. Um, okay. Is this where you did your research on me? Uh, some of it. I got some other stuff as well. Okay. Um, what's with your obsession with Johnny Cash? Oh, I love Johnny Cash. I, you know, it's funny. I don't know. Well, well I had a neighbor. I have a neighbor uh, back home in Ithaca, a couple up, up the street, Mr. Combe, who passed away several years ago, and he loved Johnny Cash. He's a big country music fan. So I always remember him listening to <clears throat> Johnny Cash. I've always loved country music. Um, and then I think, you know, when the movie came out, Walk the Line, that's like it sort of resurfaced. And I just, I'm obsessed with that song. <laughs> well, you would have loved uh, last summer, Sue and I on our 25th anniversary, we went to Kingston, Ontario. And there's this playhouse called the Gananoque Playhouse. And they were doing a whole musical. I think there was uh, six, uh, six people performing. There were three women, three men. And yeah. they did Johnny Cash's life from the time he was born all the way to time till uh, he died uh, in a musical. You Amazing. would have been, you would, and with all his songs, right? So, and yeah. the women sang it, and the men sang it, and they sang it together, and they sang it, like, you would have been, like, in heaven. It was. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so that movie, I mean, it tells a great human story, right? right? It tells a great human story. And then the Ken Burns special, Country Music, if you haven't seen that, 
Ken Burns is a fantastic uh, documentarian, right? Okay. He did a documentary on country music, and it's it's beautiful. It's brilliant. I mean, it's great history of of American. I mean, it's amazing. It's a great okay. story. All right. Where has been the most magical place you've coached early birdies? Oh gosh, the most magical place I've coached early birdies. Do I have to name one place? Nope. Give me a couple. I'd love to hear more. Honestly, it's in the it's in the environment of the child. So it's in you know the backyard of a family that invites me to come and do a private class. It's in their movement room in their school. It's in Central Park where they're familiar with the trees and the birds and the park benches and and the pathway. It's, it's their environment. I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, it's not at a golf facility. Um, ha, love it. Love it. It's pretty much everywhere, but it's on a it's on a rooftop down on Wall Street, where okay. if one ball ekes if one ball ekes through the fence, you know it's going down onto the top of like a, awesome. a stockbroker. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that yeah. one. That's fantastic. Oh my god. I, yeah, yeah. Like small like the the more awkward the space, the better, because it really forces you to just think about. It. I mean, that's been the beauty of it. That's. 100%. I can tell you right now, most magical place for me was a birthday party. Taking it to a, uh, taking it to a kid's house yeah. and set it up. And it was like, wow, it was absolute yeah. magic for the kid. And, and they had a blast, right? So who's Kate, Tep who's Kate Tempesta's lifelong hero? My mom and dad. Perfect. And my, my grandpa, Charlie. Oh. Oh, there you go. The name. Is there something out there online that says differently? No, 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 not okay. at all. No, that's that's just. I always ask. I love that question because some people come back with sports figures. Some people come back with their parents. Some people come back with their husband. Like it's like I asked Erica Larkin. She said her dad and her husband, right? Because they, you know. And then like I've asked other people, and like Donovan Bailey, the sprinter, he's like my dad. He was my best friend. You know, one hundred percent. Right. So, I mean, yeah. you know what, it's, it's really cool because it, it just, it's just a great question. I like to see who they think about, right? And it, it's really interesting that way. All right. So, um, tell us a little something that you may have may or, may or may have not done with your brother that may have just, you got really lucky <laughs> from avoiding going to jail. <laughs> I may or may not have done with my brother. Well, I drove his car like very early on. I mean... I learned how to drive when I was like 14 and I was taking his stick. Is that what you're talking about? Oh, a little bit of shenanigans up in Ethica that, you know, surprised oh, me. Oh, we did so many shenanigans in Ethica. I mean, we would uh, jump the gorges at Cornell. We'd jump off bridges at Cornell into these gorges that are now like fenced in and you, you get arrested if you jump. There you go. Yeah, probably cliff jumping in Ithaca. <laughs> and driving well before I was supposed to. And, uh, there you go. Taking my mom's car out for a drive when we were like 15. Yeah. All right. Super. That's amazing. Stuff that Charlie's never going to do. Never. Charlie, you're never, never going to do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just hear stories about your crazy mom. Oh, man. Who would you want to play? Who is the one person in this world, if you had the opportunity to spend four and a half hours playing a game of golf with them, just a nice, relaxed time, who would that person want to be? Grandpa Charlie. Oh, really? Eh? That'd be cool. All right. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Not that he's ever picked up a golf club before, but I'd want to know him as my 46-year-old self. Oh, that's pretty cool. That'd be cool to have that conversation with him, right? You know, it's like, you know, you'd love to be able to have that conversation now. I, I think I, I would have to agree with you. If I could go out and play golf with my mom right now, you know, at 52, and, and you know, she'd be 82, yeah. And yep. she just sit in the cart and drive it. You know, I could just see her right now, right? She'd still probably dye her hair red. But my, my point being is, is it, that's, that's an awesome way to think about it because it's like you often immediately say some hero or some, some sports person or something like that. And it's honestly and truly like I would love to go play golf with my mom. Like that would be a really neat thing because she's not here, right? Right, right. So, all right. Uh, thank you very much. Those are great five questions. All right. But um, here's where the – this is kind of <laughs> – I need some advice. I need some advice. And actually, you know what? It's really interesting. So it's my son's, um, you know, so my son's finishing grade 12, right? So he's going on to, you know, he's finishing off high school and so on and so forth. Um, but, you know, his school is a pretty good spirit school. 
And, you know, I hear that you have a, a certain flair for decorating um, homecoming, like, uh, hallways and, oh, like, stuff you at your high You talk to my school. mother. And, and I, I really think this is, like, I, I'm just saying, I no, your high school has this, like, award or plaque for your decorating skills in for homecoming. Oh, it's, geez. like, rivaled, I heard. Can you help yeah. us understand how you became, like, you should be really on HGTV and doing, like, home decorating or something like that? Okay, so one day we had this brilliant idea that we were going to go down and paint the quad in our high school. And so we uh, were given the paint by actually the parent association head, who was a really cool dad. And we went down, and there's probably six or seven of us that uh, just went off into different corners of the quad, and we, 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 we Rose during the story. No. This story's too good. She froze, folks. Oh, I hope she comes back. Oh, no. Kate. She's frozen. Ah. Come back to me. Uh oh. So let's see if we can get this started. We paused at, you played golf with Mario Vitale and Jimmy Fallon. They even offered to help you out and you turned them down. Did you not? They even offered what? To help you out, right? To get early birdies started. They did, they did. Uh, yes, I was and given some, yes, I was given some seed money back then to go out and do what, I was meant to be doing and they recognized that you know they saw the the purpose and what I did and the passion with what with how I did it and uh they it, I'll never forget the the look in my eyes one day it was at a it was at the foot it was at a um it was when the Giants were playing New England Patriots and it was a Super Bowl party and I was leaving the apartment I was leaving his apartment and he looked me dead in the eye and he said, Tempesta, you need to do this. You need to do more of this. And at that, that point, I was teaching, you know, eight kids on a Monday, eight kids on a Wednesday in 900 square feet. And it hit me like a ton of bricks. It was just a really defining moment. Oh, you know what? The really cool story about these, and this is why, yes, I do my digging. Um, but, I mean, it's really an interesting point, right? Because you don't know how sometimes these things work. Right. And I mean, the reason you met Mario Batali is you were training his wife as a, as a fitness uh, or rehabilitation. I can't remember who it was fitness, right? It was fitness. Yeah. Yeah. It was fitness. You were training his wife and it was like, you became friends and then it was like, Oh, you're rolling over. It was like, and well, but it golf. started, it started earlier than that. I got into early childhood education because of them. Oh, I was at, I was at their son's fourth birthday party in the country. And I was sitting next to a woman who went to the school that I then taught at a, a year later. Mm -hmm. And she asked me what I did. And I said, I was a, you know, athletic trainer and I helped people get back from injury. And she was the one that set me up with the director of the nursery school. And I then went on to train the director who then saw something in me and said, I need you to think about being our creative movement teacher. And so I went for several years being a creative movement teacher. And then I started the golf program. And it was years later when Mario said to me, you need to do more of this. So it was early childhood education first through them. Yep. And then several years later, it was, hey, I got my summers off. I'm going to play golf seriously. I love this game. I'm going to bring golf to young children and create a program. And that's when I started replicating it a little bit. And that's when Mario came back and said, you need to do more of this. Children need it. Ah. So what, you heard me tell a story about how early birdies has affected myself in terms of my students in Regan, right? From two and a half to 10 now. You have a great story about somebody that's been in your life for a long time. And I'd love to people to hear the story about Gordon. Right? Ah, Gordon. Gordon, Gordon, Gordon. Love my Gordon. Yeah, right. Gordon came to me as a, as a, you know, cool skateboarder with long shaggy hair who kind of thought golf would be kind of cool to get into. Um, he was a little bit older. He was not an early birdie. But again, it goes back to creating a sense of belonging and rapport and trust and, um, and taking this skater dude and 
trying to find metaphors that resonated with him and, and how to teach him the golf swing. Um, and he's just, yeah, he was, and he's also somebody that I was able to um, really have deep conversations about vision 54 and essential playing skills. And as a 12, a 13, a 14 year old, he really took to it and, and not only brought it into his world of golf, but brought it into his schoolwork, his friendships, his relationships at home, his everything about his character. And so that was really cool just to see how deep you can go with the game of golf um, and the relationship you build with your student. He's now at uh, University of Pennsylvania. Well, he's now probably home, homeschooled, but he, um, yeah, uh, Gordon, love that kid. But that's just it. And that's what I wanted to hear that story for, because what people don't realize is the connections, the effect we have on children and how we can motivate them bigger than just this game. The game is the vehicle. The vehicle, game sure. is, is the vehicle to help us do this, right? Yeah. But the more that we think with a golf pro hat on, the less we'll connect and the less we'll impact. So yeah. I want you to give me five gold pieces of nugget, gold nuggets of Kate Tempesta that would make any golf coach watching this change their thought process to become a better engaged coach. Oh gosh. I mean, it's always student centered, right? Always, 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 always. One. It's always about listening to them. Two. Uh, it's always about keeping it playful. Where'd you go? I'm right here. Oh, sorry. My, my screen went blank. Sorry. Three, yeah. three playful. Sorry. Um, it's, um, it's, it's embracing that it's about them. It's not about you. I love that saying. I say that all the time. All right. Um, one more, one more nugget. Come on. You got it in there. You know, and be vulnerable, right? Vulnerable. Like, we don't know everything. We're not perfect. I mean, sure. I know three to six year olds, but there's a ton of stuff I could do better with. And there's a ton of ways that I could be better at my business. And, and, and Mari has really been. Exactly. Oh man, it's doing to me again. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna sell the internet. This is unreal. Mm. Well, you're frozen again, my darling. Mm. All right. Mm. 